This E3 coverage is brought to you by Ting, mobile that makes sense. So it was our first day on the show floor today. Yes. What did you think as, as a newbie? Oh, uh, there were certainly a whole lot of video games there, yeah. You checked out a lot of Nintendo stuff. I did, yeah. I kind of made a beeline for y Nintendo. Yeah, how was uh, Super Smash Brothers? It, how do you, do you like Super Smash Brothers? Do you know me? Do you like Super Smash Brothers? Yeah. I like it a lot. Great news. Uh -huh. It's like the best Super Smash Brothers game probably. No shit. Really? I mean, I'm not like one of the wow. there are a lot of people wait, out there. Wait, wait, so purists. let's rewind yeah. and and go back to, to there's a huge split within the Super Smash community. Right. And will this unite all of them? I think it's too early to say. I think it's definitely trying to. It's a much faster yeah. game than Brawl was. Feels closer to melee in terms of speed. No they tripping. took out tripping. Yeah, they sort of just in general seem to have taken competitive Smash players seriously. Yeah, which is something it took me a long time to do. So I'm impressed that a multinational corporation has managed to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, yeah, it's cool. It seems like a Smash Brothers game that is going to make those people happy and people like me who play with items on medium or very high. Yeah, happy. you know. So the thing that I'm kind of like, I find most interesting about how Nintendo has been like marketing. Uh, a smash at this E3 is like they're having a competitive yeah. tournament and it kind of like I'm kind of excited like are they considering dipping their toe into well, like esports e in a more yeah. significant way dude people were lining up for that event like 10 hours yeah, before around it the started yeah. it was crazy it's around. like an apple launch or something people are super into it at the end of it Reggie teased that they might potentially do this again in the future maybe bring it on the road as like a sort of globe trotting tour that could to be cool like That'd generate awesome. hype for, for Smash yeah. 4. So that's, that's a neat idea. It's but, such a good game. It's such a good game to watch, too. I yeah. know. I, I don't watch competitive Smash, but but me and our editor, Jeremiah, were watching um, the final match of that Smash Brothers tournament, oh, which yeah. was a Kirby versus uh, Zero Suit Samus match that was just so intense and so close. It was the last match of the round, and then Reggie came out at the end as a surprise. It was just phenomenal. Anyone can watch Smash and enjoy yeah. it. But I feel bad talking about Smash, since you don't care about Smash. What was the most exciting <laughs> thing for you on day um, one? Well, actually a lot happened to me today. I spent half the day at the Ubisoft booth mm. because of reasons that were beyond my control. Uh, Far Cry 4, I played, I so I was playing Far Cry 4 co-op. I looked up and Aisha Tyler standing right next to me playing. <laughs> I had no, no idea. And I was like, fuck, this is awesome. But she was playing, so I couldn't like talk to her or anything. Or ask her to marry me. Did I um, did I tell you just while we're talking about celebrities that while I was playing Rainbow Six the other night, like uh, before the embargo, we were like in a room playing Rainbow Six, and um, Lavar Burton walked into the room. Dude, what the hell? <laughs> Why is E3 like full of celebrities now? I don't know. I bumped into Vern Troyer, Mini Me, twice yeah. today on the show floor. Uh, Matt and I walked by uh, Rampage Jackson, the like crazy UFC champion. Yeah, right. Well, honestly, I didn't well, know until he told me, but apparently he's a big deal. See, as me and Lavar and the rest of our group were walking out of the Rainbow Six demo, we walked past comedian Paul Shear as well. I don't and then know I've seen is. like just a grip of people, and there are always people who you either know right away, and you're like, oh man, or oh, I know that that person's face yeah. is a face I've seen. Yeah, um, it's crazy. It's getting bigger and bigger every year. But yeah, Far Cry, Far Cry 4 was amazing. Um, I shot down a helicopter from nice. atop an elephant. Yeah. So. A full wow. helicopter or a two-seater pedal helicopter? A full helicopter, wow. yeah. It's good stuff. It was pretty amazing. Um, I also saw The Division, yeah. which is really good. Um, God, I, I I'm pretty sure it was game. the same demo as what they showed, but it's always nice to have somebody actually playing it live for you and walking you through it. Mm -hmm. um, they have some really cool weapons in that game. And really? you can modify each weapon with like five or ten different weapon modifications. So it gets like pretty balls out insane. I kind of remember from like the first uh, like gameplay trailer they, they showed off at the, the last E3, they had someone finding like, like opening like a, basically a chest and it was like the loot. Right. You know, yeah. of like the mission. <clears throat> yeah. And he was like, oh, wow, that's a really good one. You know, yeah. like, you so that's it. what the side quests are. Like, all the side quests you so do is it basically. Far Cry, then? Get you. Like, sorry, it's, I mean, not far. I mean, I meant to say Borderlands y. Is it Borderlands y then? Mm, like, with no. like collectible. I wouldn't say it's like excessive, excessive loot. It's like everything that you, you get, you should be able to use. You know, okay. like, you don't really throw anything away. Um, I gotta admit, um, I was a little, since this was my first day of E3, when we went to go see these like behind closed doors events, 
I was a little let down by how many of them were exactly what we saw on the presentation. It is helpful yeah. to have a narrator explain, like, hey, here are the new mechanics in Assassin's Creed. But one thing I really liked was when I went to my Witcher 3 demo, they picked up from where the press conference ended. Oh, and <coughs> yeah. They picked up from where the press conference ended, so... You remember how the, during Microsoft's press conference, the Witcher thing was him hunting a griffin and ripping off its yeah. head and riding away? Um, they were like, so you've hunted the griffin, now you're going to return that griffin head. So they picked up from, they knew that wow. everyone in the room had yeah. seen this stuff already. That's, like, that's cool, but know that that's unusual yeah. for E3. Okay. Like most most uh, demos just go over what was revealed. Right. If they had a gameplay right. demo in a press conference, they'll do that and talk about it. Because like the Assassin's Creed uh, behind closed doors presentation yeah. that we saw was the same thing. But I felt like they elucidated a lot better on the things in the game that are new. They talked they about did. all of the overhauls to the gameplay mechanics, which they yeah. didn't really discuss in the press conference. So it was it was still enlightening. And it's also, I feel, just better to watch things on an actual TV, on a system, yeah. than yeah. live-streamed over yeah. the internet. Yeah. Well, sure. What about you, though? You were on the show floor all yeah, day so, long. So I actually got a chance to check out the uh, Splatoon and... The new Nintendo IP, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I actually was like so surprisingly really excited to play that game. Huh. Um, How something, is it? About, something about the movement was really interesting, um, and then also it's, being a first person It seems very fast paced. Yeah. How did it feel? It can be. So this is the this is the problem. It's uh -oh. you have to use the gamepad and you have to use the accelerometer as like part of your for the targeting, camera for targeting and shooting. You can actually control the camera with the thumbstick. So, so basically, what I ended up doing um, once I kind of figured out the controls is yeah. I would look side to side and aim with the right thumbstick, but then I would have to tilt up and down with the actual physical. So the it's a right mandatory stick wouldn't gyroscope? do that. <laughs> Correct. Uh, the the right why? stick would not do that, and why? Or it wouldn't do it. It would move the camera, but but it wouldn't move my aimer. Right? It wouldn't move where my my uh, paint or ink was going. That should be reversed. I know completely. And so I think if if playing the game without the gamepad, and if you can play it with just the um, like the pro controller sure. or even nunchucks, would yeah. be a huge improvement. Because if you could play with normal first-person controls, I think it'd be a really awesome. That's, I mean, that's the thing is that I don't necessarily hate the idea of using the gyroscope if it's an auxiliary thing. So if sure. I could walk around with the left stick, move my reticle with the right stick, and then look around occasionally without moving my reticle using the gyroscope, that's cool. That's a third optional axis that doesn't yeah. screw me up. But like, yo, Nintendo, Requ requiring it. we figured out third-person shooter controls like a mad long time ago. <laughs> you don't really need to mix that up. I've I know, seen so few games that like have mandatory gyroscopes that are actually good without yeah. you having to like contort your body in all these I'm weird positions. I'm trying to think positions. of an example. And it's so obvious, like, it's like, oh, it's a new IP, it, it's, and it's cool, and they, they probably knew it was going to be really exciting for people to see and I know they want people to use the gamepad and feel like it's like a worthwhile addition Necessary to like the console. Thing. But it's like, it's not worth it. And it's actually, just... I would actually be sad to lose the gamepad if I had a, a, a pro controller because there's a map that's always present on the gamepad and you huh. can tap it and you can like launch yourself to mm -hmm. a teammate, whatever. Gotcha. You can, like, it's almost like teleporting further yeah. up onto the map. That does which is actually cool. The fact that the gamepad is so essential, or at least the touchscreen thing for jumping to like where you respawn, that bums me out a little bit because it means that that game won't have local multiplayer necessarily, or at least it right. won't have symmetrical local multiplayer, and that's a bummer. Right. I'm also yeah. bummed that like, if they really are shoehorning in gyroscope as much as it sounds like, that's. Or the touchscreen, even like that's almost antithetical to what Nintendo's done the past few months mm -hmm. because Mario Kart 8 doesn't use the the screen for anything worthwhile. Basically, right. same with Smash. I played Smash all day today and like never once looked at or used the touchscreen. As a matter of fact, they handed us four GameCube controllers and hid yeah. the, the yeah. gamepad somewhere else. Like, mm -hmm. I don't well, know. but it makes sense that they would develop for it though and almost make people use it until they realize yeah. like, okay, we should at least have a con like an option yeah. to like change the controller layout. I can't imagine that game will ship without normal ass third person shooter controls. I'm the sure concept, it will. The concept is so promising. Like it looks totally. so neat. Yeah. I, like how, that aside, what did you think of the actual gameplay of it? I thought, I thought it was really fun. I thought it's really, it's really, you have to think about playing the game in a different way than just a normal first person shooter. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it, you have to make sure you're spreading your ink all over the map because that's how you win. It's not about like taking someone out, but then if you take someone out, you you hit them and then they have to like force to respawn. And they're not spreading their ink during. They're that not time. exactly. So you benefit from doing that, but you 
almost benefit more from just like shooting the ink all over the place. It, yeah. It's interesting. And the I fact that you can move like and like. That game, the more and more fun. I think about it, the more it feels like a mode in a full game. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of is graffiti mean. mode in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, yeah, actually, where you're skating on different parts of the level and, and gaining them. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think I would agree with you if it weren't for the interesting stuff about the movement. If it weren't yeah. for the fact that you're diving in and out of the ink. That because to I me feel, yeah, like the hook. Sure. I feel like, I, yeah, because I feel like I could do some incredibly awesome badass moves if the controls were like something I was used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the fact that I'm like having to go like this and like think about yeah. where I'm like moving my like my arms, whatever. I mean, like I'm not like an old man who's like turns by, you know. Right. Like, I know how to use this. Totally. Yeah. I, it, same thing with, like, I mean, I, the way I prefer it is in the uh, Captain Toad game that they're putting out, which I played today. Um, it's It works the same way it works as a mini game in Super Mario 3D World in that you can tilt it using the gyroscope controls, but the right stick works at the exact same time the exact way you want it to, <laughs> and you can use either one. You can use either <laughs> one. Too much whiskey? <coughs> it's okay. Let it out. Oh. Yeah, I know. Nintendo makes me emotional. Drinking too. wrong whiskey is. Woo. At any rate, I, not to. <laughs> wrong pipe? Yeah, you really wrong feel pipe. It, huh? it the burn? Feels real warm. <laughs> In your lungs? Hot lungs. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to rag completely on on Nintendo I know because you don't. I, I think some of my favorite things I've seen today have been theirs. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World seems dope. That new Kirby Canvas Curse follow up seems like an interesting mm -hmm. way to re-steer that franchise out of just being superstar over and Captain over. Captain Toad. And that Captain Toad game is adorable as, as shit, and is actually a little bit more involved than the Captain Toad puzzles were in, in 3D World. Like they're they are still making the some of the prettiest, most interesting, most colorful looking oh, things that sure. I saw today, and I. The games that I want to play most out of everything I've seen and played so far uh -huh. are those. I want yeah. to sp spend some time getting really yeah. deep into those and figuring out. Yeah, the, what the, the quality, are. like the texture, and the way that the the Yoshi game, like the yarn, would, yeah. like bounce when you jumped on it. Oh I'm my like, god! How much do I want incredible. one of those Yoshi yarn dolls? Dude, that, oh my god! It has the, to exist. The if they Nintendo sold Direct those. Video, like oh real ones, God. I would buy a shit ton of them. They'd be like the new Beanie Babies. Dude, Nintendo needs to get into that aspect of merchandising. Like this figure thing is obviously going to be a for them, but like someone no, on Etsy is going to make a ton of money. Right. I just want to cuddle with a yarn Yoshi. How big? What size would you want? I want to put it in my pocket. I want the pocket. I want the size of the pocket. I want the size that the dude had in the video where it was like peering out of his blazer. I just want to walk around like that all the time. I want to pin it to my blazer and wear look. it as a brooch. You just want to crucify a Yoshi on your shirt. Yeah, you're basically. Me. Pretty so much. Look. Not dark. No, at not all. at all. Nintendo. Well, that's day one, I guess. Yep. Time to drink. Hey, there is a ton of awesome video games coming out this year, and if you want the money to actually buy all the games you want, then you should sign up for Ting. Yeah, Ting is this alternative sort of version of a cell phone provider plan that doesn't require you to lock yourself into a painful two-year contract and makes you only pay for what you use each month. So let's say one month you leave your phone at home and go on vacation, you won't pay any data fines and minutes. Yeah, you only pay for what you use. There's no long-term plans. You don't have to pay any crazy hidden fees. Yeah. Like you always have to do with your cell phone provider. It puts the power back in your hands and it is completely transparent. They will show you everything yeah. that you have used and all of your charges. No hidden fees, no crazy stuff like that. And they have awesome customer service. If you call up Ting, you will actually speak to a real live human being, right which away. is unheard of. In this day and age? No robots. Are you kidding me? Exactly. I'm over robots. So if you want to sign up for Ting or if you want to check out their savings calculator, which can show you how much money you would save over two years if you switch to Ting, just hit up rev3games.ting.com, and if you sign up with that link, you'll also get $25 off your first monthly bill. Again, that is rev3games.ting.com, and remember, every sign-up helps support Rev3Games.